How many times have you ever been told, you're too young to stress? Don't be stressed, you're fine. You're only in high school, you don't know what stress is. And just how many times has that made the stress completely disappear? If you know me, you know I'm just about the biggest ball of stress you'll ever meet. And if you ask my peers and teachers, they can attest to that. However, because of that, those three same phrases have been repeated to me a seemingly infinite amount of times. But what a lot of us forget sometimes is that stress is a completely normal and for the most part, healthy stage of adolescence and can actually benefit us at times. For as long as I can remember, the word test has made me want to crawl out of my skin and hide. Why is that? Why is it that this very normal concept of schoolwork that all of my friends dealt with scared me so much? According to author and expert on the teenage brain, Nicola Morgan, this is an experience many kids face. Stress can stem from a number of different reasons, whether it be to please parents and exceed their expectations, or try to get a better grade than Susie because Susie always gets straight A's and if I don't get straight A's, then I'm never gonna get into college and I'm gonna end up cleaning dishes at McDonald's for the rest of my life. When our brains feel under attack, two very crucial chemicals are released. Those two are our good friends, adrenaline and cortisol. These two have a ton of effects on our bodies, but some of the most common are usually those we feel and associate with stress. Ever felt like your heart was beating out of your chest, your hands got all sweaty, yet at the same time you feel like the heat has completely escaped the room, and now you have a splitting headache and you can't even think straight? You can think adrenaline and cortisol. While those side effects aren't the greatest, in dangerous situations, these chemicals can kick in to save us. When under threat, our bodies switch into the fight or flight mode. This is a special setting that our body flicks on when we see that creepy guy in the corner of our eye following us down the street, or the wild dog that's chasing us through the park. And we can thank our bodies for that one. So when can we say that the stress that we're feeling is too much stress? Well, this is where the idea of anxiety kicks in. Though stress and anxiety can often get jumbled up in the midst of a panic, these two have their differences, and they're important to shed light on. In an interview that I conducted with Ms. Nicola Morgan, we were able to deduct that stress is a biological response that triggers our brains to superperform when under any kind of threat, whether it be physical or mental. However, stress turns into anxiety when there appears to be a fear about something that is going to happen in the future rather than something that is occurring in the present. Unlike stress, sometimes anxiety can lead to anxious breakdowns and might require a more professional type of help whether it be from a psychologist or a therapist, and at times, medication. I tend to hear people my age talking a lot about how they have so much homework and that they're so anxious. And while that may be true for a select few, it is important we note the differences and understand when stress is merely just a little stress and when anxiety joins that loop. Throughout this journey of research, I chose to read The Teenage Guide to Stress, written by Nicola Morgan, and then followed it up with a quick questionnaire for my classmates. Going into this, I was quite curious to see if some of the same things that caused me stress caused my peers stress as well. With information from both sources, I concluded that these were the most common stressors among teenagers. Grades, the college process, social media, decision-making, failure, societal beauty standards, peer pressure, lack of sleep, fear of missing out, arguing with parents, relationships, growing up, sexual maturity, and fitting in. After reading and seeing people's responses, it became really apparent to me that we teenagers face a ton of the same problems nowadays, especially revolving around this thing. Our lives are completely sucked in and consumed by this one tiny device. And I'd be the biggest hypocrite in the world to say that I'm not completely sucked into doing consumed by this one tiny device as well. Constantly buzzing, reminding us that we're not pretty enough to be like that girl in the magazine, muscular enough to get girls, hot enough to get likes, smart enough to get into that Ivy, or cool enough to be invited to that party on Friday night. No wonder we feel this amount of stress regarding ourselves. 
for me, how I look and come off to others has become one of the biggest stressors in my life. And unfortunately, it has for tons of others as well. I, f I wake up feeling like I have to do the trendy skin routine that Emma Chamberlain said would make my skin shiny and that I have to look skinny enough for that kid who probably doesn't even care about my feelings. So let me hop on that diet and do some workouts and then maybe I'll have a flat tummy and he can finally like me. This is the sad reality of modern stress that so many of us experience. So how do we stop it? Unfortunately, as long as social media dictates our lives and until the daunting workload of school is reduced, there will always be a little bit of stress that we may feel. Yet, there are solutions that we can use to calm ourselves down from the stress of life. And here are a few. Exercise. If done for the right reasons, exercising can be one of the best methods of forgetting your troubles for a moment and focusing solely on yourself. When you exercise, you also release endorphins, which long story short, makes your mood go from sad to happy real quick. For about a year now, I've made it a goal to wake up every morning and exercise to start my day. And while my poor parents have to deal with my grumpy mood at 6 a.m. on a Monday, the result is a slightly calmer and happier Naomi who's ready to take on her day. Art. If you're looking for a way to put your life on hold for a sec, try it. When I find the time to get away from school and college work, one of my favorite activities to do is art. Whether it be photography, drawing, painting, or making a friendship bracelet, it quickly gets my mind off of the negativity. Breathing techniques. This one was tough to get through my stubborn brain. Being the super impatient person I am who constantly wants instant gratification, it was at first hard for me to understand the benefits of slowing down and focusing on my breath. When the mind is overworked and too stressed, our brain gets clouded and we cannot think straight. Not until I started doing those hot yoga classes that I realized how important it was to breathe. I honestly found it a little comical that in between what I thought was just a steamy room filled with a bunch of sweaty people getting an intense workout was an entire breathing exercise that left me feeling completely refreshed and unclouded. Music. I left this one for last since it's usually my go-to. Music is something that I have always used to escape into a different world. Whether I'm studying for finals and blast Chopin and Tchaikovsky to the highest possible volume, or I'm getting in my daily grind on the tread and need some piece of Rocky to get me through. Or if my mom just yelled at me and I need a quick coming of age movie moment where I slam my door and blast some Mac DeMarco while crying. Or if I just heard a new song and I know I can learn it on my ukulele. Music always comes to my rescue when I feel stressed out. So, let's not allow stress to debilitate us. Rather, motivate, inspire, and help us. Thank you.